Hey guys, it's Medicosis Perfect Nanos where medicine makes perfect sense today. We'll compare between Aspergillus fumigatus and Aspergillus flavus. So let's get started. We divide microbes into bacteria, fungi, viruses, and parasites. Where do you think Aspergillus fit? If you say fungus, you're absolutely right. In my pulmonology playlist, I've discussed allergic bronchopulmonary aspergillosis in a previous video. It was epic, by the way. You should watch it. Fungal infections of the lung include histoplasmosis, plastomycosis, coccidioidomycosis, and aspergillosis. These four can also be systematic. So we're talking here about aspergillus fumigatus, branching septate hyphae, acute angles less than 45 degrees, not dimorphic, it's only mold, it's only hyphae. There is no yeast. This is different from the previous three. Those three were dimorphic. Histoplasmosis, blastomycosis, and coccidioide are dimorphic. What does dimorphic mean? It's mold in the cold, yeast in the beast. Back to aspergillus, it can come on top of a previous cavity, and we call this aspergilloma. For instance, you had a tuberculosis cavity, or you had a histoplasmosis cavity, and then the aspergillus can come on top of the previous cavity. We call this aspergilloma, or a fungus ball, or a fungal colonization, or colonizing aspergillosis, whatever. If you are immunocompromised, it can lead to hematogenous spread or spread like distant. It can lead to invasive aspergillosis, necrotizing bronchopneumonia, this is ugly, and even hemorrhagic infarctions. Why do we call this fungus aspergillus? We named it after aspergillum. So here's the story. When Pierre Antonio Michele saw this fungus under the microscope for the first time in history, he thought that it looks like an aspergillum. It's a liturgical instrument used to sprinkle holy water in Roman Catholicism and the Anglican Church. And that's, by the way, is a very good observation from Pierre. It looks exactly like the aspergillus, like this, and then when you sprinkle the what's it's like... It's, that's a beautiful analogy from Pierre Antonio Michele. Unlike fried egg appearance. Oh, look here, student under the microscope. Does that look... This is the fried egg appearance, but it doesn't look like a fried... That's the fried egg appearance, how you have to memorize it. This is actually creative if you understand where it came from. So, it's a fungus, has septate hyphae. This aspergillus branch has acute angles, 45 degrees or less. It's catalase positive translation. If you happen to suffer from chronic granulomatous disease, this is going to be really bad because in chronic granulomatous disease, your neutrophils are toast. I'm not making fun of patients. I'm trying to make medicine easy for students. And they are septate. So here is my luxurious table, Aspergillus fumigatus versus Aspergillus fatal. Honestly, they look different under a microscope, but it's really complicated, and don't get me started. Aspergillus fumigatus does not secrete aflatoxins, but Aspergillus flavus secretes aflatoxins, and you find them in cereal grains, among others. Back to Aspergillus fumigatus, it can cause many diseases. It can cause allergic bronchopulmonary aspergillosis, which we have talked about before, aspergilloma, or invasive aspergillosis. Let's start with the first one. Watch my previous video. Happens in patients who have chronic asthma. It can lead to bronchiectasis and you see recurrent infiltrates on radiology. Aspergilloma, oma means mass, so it's a fungus ball or colonizing aspergillosis, came on top of a previous cavity of tuberculosis or histoplasmosis. It can lead to hemoptysis. Third, invasive aspergillosis. This is really ugly. Acute, it's called acute invasive pulmonary aspergillosis or chronic. Chronic could be either one depending on your immunity. If you are immunocompromised, you might get chronic necrotizing pulmonary aspergillosis. If you are immunocompetent, you can get chronic cavitary aspergillosis. Either one can end up with chronic fibrosing aspergillosis. This is a lung fibrosis. Of course, lung fibrosis has more than 100 etiologies. Check my pulmonology playlist. It was horrible. Now let's talk about the Aspergillus flavus. Secretes aflatoxins. It can lead to acute hepatitis, hepatocellular carcinoma, immunosuppression, and neutropenia. Okay, back to the fumigatus. If you are immunocompromised, you are at a higher risk. Immunocompromised such as what? HIV patients, patients with chronic granulomatous disease, patients taking immunosuppressant drugs such as high-dose steroids, especially for a long time, and other immunosuppressant, rituximab, cyclophosphamide, etc. 
So you have lung disease, and then this aspergillus will become invasive, hematogenous spread, necrotizing bronchopneumonia, hemorrhagic infections, and distant spread can go to your brain, your heart causing endocarditis, your GI tract causing gastrointestinal aspergillosis, etc. Aspergillus flavors countries with warm climate. Number one country is, is Sudan. So, I was born in Egypt. Here is a lesson in geography. Here you have Egypt like this. Right. Okay. And that's this Red Sea. Beautiful. That's a horrible Egypt. And then after that, you have Sudan. So, here is Egypt and here is Sudan. People in Egypt and people in Sudan can develop hepatocellular carcinoma for a completely different reason. An average person who gets hepatocellular carcinoma in Egypt, the cause is viral hepatitis, especially hepatitis C. It could be B or C, but mostly C. An average person in Sudan, if he develops hepatocellular carcinoma, it's usually due to the aflatoxins. The aflatoxins are secreted by what? Lots of organisms, including the famous aspergillus, not the fumigatus, but the flavus. What does the word flavus mean? It means yellow. Oh, is this similar to the name Flavio? Yes, indeed. Flavio literally means yellow hair. So, Egypt and hepatocellular carcinoma equals hepatitis C. Sudan and hepatocellular carcinoma, usually an aflatoxin. Okay, medicosis, so I live in San Francisco. How come do you expect me to know this? Actually, I'll, I learned this from Harrison's Internal Medicine. That's an American textbook, by the way. It was available for you if you have bothered to check. Sorry, I'm messing with you. Love you. Flavus means yellow. Latin is very important. That's why the name of my channel is Medicosis Perfectionalis. Medicosis is Greek. Perfectionalis is Latin. But you will never find this in Merriam-Webster. Here are some tips. Granulocytes are the cells that are responsible for defending your body against aspergillus. Therefore, when you have problems with your granulocytes, such as patients with chronic granulomatous disease, because of the deficiency of the NADPH oxidase, you are at increased risk of invasive aspergillosis. Now let's talk briefly about invasive aspergillosis, shall we? Organisms that can cause the invasive aspergillus include aspergillus fumigatus, the vast majority of cases, even aspergillus flavus, and others. Risk factors, neutrophil problems, could be low number or low function. Low number of neutrophils, neutropenia. Abnormal function is chronic granulomatous disease because I've told you that the granulocytes are the cells that are responsible for defending your body against aspergillosis. Drugs such as high dose steroids, other immunosuppressants, and patients with HIV. What are the symptoms of invasive aspergillosis? They can go anywhere. Pulmonary aspergillosis, chronic necrotizing aspergillosis, chronic cavitary pulmonary aspergillosis, disseminated infection, CNS infection, endocarditis, GI aspergillosis in your gastrointestinal tract, and even cutaneous aspergillosis. These aspergillus are nasty, man. What's the treatment of aspergillus? It depends. If it's aspergilloma, again, it depends. If it's asymptomatic, just observe it. If it's symptomatic, like hemoptysis, freaking remove it. Invasive aspergillosis, the number one drug of choice is voriconazole. That's an exam question. Second choice is caspofungin. That's an echinocandens. Here is a diagram that represents the antifungals. So here is the fungal cell. So here you have a cell wall, and this is going to be inhibited by the echinocandin, such as caspofungin, which can be used to treat invasive aspergillosis. And then you have cell membrane inhibitors or disruptors, such as amphotericin B and nystatin, ergosterol synthesis inhibitor, the azole, such as voriconazole, the number one choice for invasive aspergillosis. How does it work? It's a cell membrane inhibitor. And then microtubule inhibitors such as grease euphulvin, and then nucleic acid synthesis inhibitors such as flucytosine, which gives you 5-FU. FU, FU back. To learn more about antifungals, antibacterials, antivirals, and antiparasitic drugs, you can check out my antibiotics course available at medicosisperfectionalis.com. It has 40 freaking videos. Also, you can check my cardiac pharmacology course and a free sample is available to download it. A complete video. My cardiac pharmacology course currently is on discount. Use the promo code CARDIOFARM50 to get a 50% discount. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. 
send me an email here, download my courses here. Thank you so much for watching. As always, be safe, stay happy, and study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionals, where medicine makes perfect sense.